We had practice last night and got the players back over and uh, worked out. And uh, obviously today's their off day. And then we'll be back at it tomorrow uh, in, in prep, uh, preparation for uh, Missouri State. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's important for our players each week to um, take the responsibility in preparation. Uh, and uh, I thought they did a really good job over the last four weeks. And, uh, and it needs to carry over into this week. Um, we saw our, our team grow a little bit and mature. Uh, we have a long ways to go uh, and a lot of work ahead of us. But uh, I do like their focus uh, and I like their work ethic. And uh, looking forward to getting back out there on uh, Tuesday. What did you learn about your, your team and your, your team's character being able to bounce back from such a loss against such an opponent? I wasn't really sure uh, about how some players would react, really a, n a number of them. And, and I think they learned, uh, we learned that uh, they'll fight and compete. Um, we were in a tough situation there at one time, being down 17 points to a really good football team. And they kept their focus. And so I was proud of them for that. And there's been a lot of talk in preseason about our team and the youth. But one thing that I said, was fairly consistent is the, these guys have been in a program or have been around a program that's won a lot of football games and understand success. And, and I was hoping that that would benefit our team, and I think it did on Saturday night. Mike, how do you approach this team about letting go of Saturday and getting themselves focused on Missouri State? And what things do you do? Is it all verbal? Or? Well, you tell them the truth that uh, you know college football is a long season. We, we've got uh, a lot of football games and three open dates. It's going to go on forever. And uh, you'll have a lot of big wins and, and fun uh, victories, and then you'll have some tough defeats. And uh, either way, when you come back Sunday night, you got to go to work. It's always been that way here. Uh, it's never really been an issue, and I don't think it'll be an issue with this team. I think the older players. Uh, do a good job of uh, providing leadership to the young ones. And I thought last night's practice went uh, about as clean and crisp as it could. Good. Mike, this probably kind of happened to you a little bit when you first took over as head coach, but I'm pretty sure Terry Allen may have been coaching at Kansas when you played. Um, I can't remember that far back. Um, I know the one guy I was coaching there was a the coach in Minnesota. After that, yeah, he, he followed him. So mm -hmm. I think he may have been there like your last year. Very well, could have been. <clears throat> Mike, I came in a little bit late, but you know, now that you've got to watch the the film here, and, and you talked about special teams right after the game, what were the what were the reasons for the miscues? Was it just young guys in, in, a, in a new environment, or was it scheme? I mean, what was the issue there? One of the disadvantages in playing an opponent. Uh, like we played on Saturday night is the first time you go out and play college football. You make a mistake, you're on a big scene. You like to have a couple games before that and to maybe identify those issues. We practiced 28 times, probably had over 200 live snaps in a padded situation, and not once did that ever happen. But it's not the same as being on national TV and being on game day and playing the number one team in the country in front of 65,000 people. That's the risk you take when you take a game like that on. Unfortunately, it cost us. Coach, when you talk about earlier about the young guys and the way that they played, was it more of courage or confidence or a mixture of both for them to be able to come back and, and you know, scare sort of stay in that sense? I think they got a lot of pride in themselves. I think they're a good group. I feel like that, uh, uh, and I've said this from day one, that they've been very focused. Uh, the players that we have on this team that, uh, that have experience in big games like that have been good leaders. And... Uh, we, as I said earlier, we have a long ways to go, but uh, we've been in this now for obviously for me 10 years, and so there's a little bit of substance to us and, and, and some core in our program that, that holds up, and we probably compete and play a little better than we should at times just based on the continuity we've had here for a number of years. Well, that, did you think uh, uh, your defense would play that well? Had you seen enough leading into that game to think, yeah, I think these guys are going to be fairly competitive in this game. Didn't have a clue. 
I really didn't. Uh, and I was was pleased with uh, the way our defense played. Uh, I was pleased with uh, some young players and the way they competed and uh, were physical in, in their tackling. But for, for me to stand up here and say that I had a, an idea of how they would compete uh, would be unfair because I hadn't seen them compete. There were so many of them that had to play in the game that, uh, that hadn't played much. Now, you know, you have to remember with our defense, the first group, there's some experience out there. But, you know, you look out there on the third series, and there's four or five guys out there at a time that have never played college football. So, you know, you start to get on the headsets and tell everybody to start backing up. Don't let anybody behind you. Don't give up big plays. And uh, Coach Spencer and the staff did a good job of playing our defense. And, and at times it cost us a little bit, but I think – in the big picture and all plays considered, the 71 plays or so that Florida State had in the game, I think it, uh, it went really well. And uh, our guys showed some, some competitive spirit and some fire. You keep talking about young guys and youth. How important is uh, evaluating and finding the right guys and then develop them, developing them in a hurry to get them ready out there in the field into your program, and in particular for the defense? Well, as I mentioned earlier, the, the one advantage we have now is we've been in it a while here, and uh, there, there has been a lot of success, and the players um, believe in themselves, and Rob Glass is our, in, in strength condition has been with us now a long time, and, and uh, he's the best in the country at developing players, in my opinion. And I, I think you see that early in their career. You see it on their bodies. Uh, and there's a mental toughness that, that uh, he and that we work to uh, – extremely hard to instill in them from day one. And in my opinion, that, that helped our football team Saturday night. Mike, what do you, uh, what'd you think of JW the other night? I know he had a little bit of a slow start, but he seemed to kind of steady after that. I mean, <coughs> were you happy with what you saw from him, knowing, thinking he's going to get better as the season goes along? I thought the, the, uh, the guy on the goal line made a terrific play. Uh, and uh, as a quarterback, you'd like to have that back, but um, I couldn't really fault him for that throw. Uh, the throw was there. The guy made a really nice play. What I would like to have back is when he fumbled the ball with four and a half minutes left. Uh, at that point, I felt like that our team had momentum. I felt like that we were in really good condition, uh, and uh, we had good uh, balance on offense, and um, that was the one I'd like to have back. But overall, uh, I thought he played pretty well. Uh, he needs to operate our offense and take care of the football. As long as he does that, we'll, we'll be just fine. Mike, since JW first came into the program to now, how has he developed as a runner, and what has he improved at the most as a runner? Oh, I think he's the same as a runner. He, he, he ran well in high school, and, and um, he, he made adjustments to this level. Um, I'm, I'm not sure you can really teach or coach um, a, a player's ability to run the football. I think that's, that happens before they get here. Um, he needs to know when to run the ball, and then he needs to make sure he takes care of the ball. Those are the two areas that he can really help our football team. Mike, the, the book said, the stat book said he played 53, they played 46. Both teams had such a respect that they weren't going to go too deep. How important now is it for you to develop more depth, both sides of the ball, especially defense. We believe in playing too deep. Uh, obviously, d defensively, we've done that for a number of years here. Bill Young uh, started the ball rolling there, and, and, and we've bought in. I think it really benefits our football team in a, in a number of ways. And then offensively, as fast as we want to play, we have to use uh, a number of guys, especially at the skill spots. And at some point, when we build up depth again on the offensive line, we'll play two offensive lines. Uh, we, we went a year or so where we had the ability to play at least three other guys on the offensive line. Um, right now we're not in a position to do that, but eventually we would like to play a number of players. Uh, so uh, they'll practice better, they know they're into it mentally, and uh, it helps our football team. How many guys on both sides, Mike, played both, every snap? Did you figure that out? All three linebackers, Peterson? I think there were six. I could be wrong. You guys follow that closer than I. Oh, in our offense? Well, on both sides of it. I mean, didn't all the line Both sides. Offense Right. I, I think there was uh, – uh, I would say not more than 10. 
I could be wrong, though. We all saw, it. We saw Tyreek for the first time. Did, did you know that he was going to go out there and make everybody just go low? I knew he was really fast. But again, I haven't watched him play live at this level. I saw videotape. At times, it's hard to make a comparison to an incoming player at this level against a team that some people think has the best defense in college football. So for, for me to say that I knew it would look that way, no. But I knew he was really fast. And um, one thing I did say publicly was that there'll be a time he'll get in the open field and it'll take everybody's breath away. The good thing for me is, is he already satisfied that. Uh, he needs to do it again each week. But um, I don't think there's any question that uh, he has special ability to run really fast. And um, I would think that the guys chasing him Saturday were fast. Uh, so uh, we're looking forward to what he brings to the table and as he continues to mature and develop. And if he will compete and have that same attitude and competitive spirit that he had Saturday night, he'll do just fine. It is rare that a team will come out of a loss with momentum or at least what's perceived to be momentum. Does it feel, is that a good word choice? Does it feel like y'all have momentum coming out of that? I, I would uh, say that uh, uh, that's true. Uh, you know, there's so much perception out there with um, college athletics, with all the media coverage and social networking. And one thing that uh, I talked to him about on Sunday night was that uh, you were fighting for your life for four weeks because nobody gave you a chance to compete against Florida State. And now they're going to tell you that you're better than what people thought you were. And we don't know if that's true or not. We really don't till the middle of October. Uh, we, we have to play a number of games in a row. We have to get some players beat up and injured. Other guys have to step in and play. They have to get tired and hurt, deal with adversity, all those things that really identify a team. So in five or six weeks, we'll know a lot more. But uh, I would say that what you said is probably accurate. A matter of just knocking some rust off and to satisfy some curiosity that y'all might have is it, is it just an absolute that you'll try to get Garmin in the game? Try to get who? <clears throat> Dax Garmin. Well, Dax has, has taken a lot of reps, and, uh, and I think he's ready to play in a game. Um, there wasn't a time Saturday night that we felt like that it benefited our team for him to be in there. But I would say in the future there will be time that it will benefit our team for him to be in there. Mike, with, uh, with Emmanuel Agba, uh, I know Glenn uh, mentioned that he's a guy that you guys put on your leadership council, and, and you've seen him in spring and the grow in the spring and the fall. Did you think, did you anticipate whether it was Florida State or a game a month from now, he was going to have that sort of game where he makes it himself known to everybody in the stands? Yeah, I was very confident that he would play well and that uh, he'll continue to play well. Uh, you know, it's in the ball's in his court now. If, if his work ethic stays uh, the same as it has been over the last nine months, and his attitude stays the same as it has been over the last nine months, and he'll play very well for the rest of the season. Mike, Mike. Will, you, will you continue to try to figure out all kinds of different ways to get Tyreek Hill the ball? Is that a big priority for you guys to continue to find ways to make sure he touches it a lot? And we're taking suggestions. There's a box outside. Uh, Drop it in there. You guys have been around, seen a lot, seen a lot of games. Uh, you've seen a lot of plays. Any of them that you know for sure work, drop it in the box. If you don't, keep it to yourself. Uh, but we have a number of guys on offense that have to make plays for us to 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 make this run. And um, we need to play better and catch the football better at the receiver position. Uh, and. Uh, Dez and Rennie and those guys have to continue to run hard and they should run better and be more productive than they were last year. And that will allow Tyreek to continue to make big plays. If we lean on Tyreek to do everything, then the other guys that we're playing are smart coaches. They'll come up with a way to slow him down. Maybe not slow him down, but they'll come up with a way to try to defend him. Uh, just because if you're somewhat one-dimensional with uh, a player on offense, uh, it's easier to, to take him out of the game. So it's important the rest of the guys make their plays, and we need to try to get him as 15 to 20 touches each game. Kickoff <coughs> returns is one thing, but at what point did you were you confident you were going to use him on the punt returns? That's a whole different animal. We worked him in the spring, and, and uh, he had received the ball really well. His attitude's good, and we all know punt returns a different animal. I mean, you you got to really want to be back there and be in tune, and got to want to play the game. 
and so we put him back there and, and he's done very well and uh, he's a threat in, in our opinion if 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 I was playing us and he had a chance to return a punt it would make me nervous and uh, he's a serious threat so every chance we get to uh, er, that we can allow him to touch the ball in space we need to give him the opportunity Touchdown pass to Glidden, where he was so wide open. How much of that do you think was influenced by Tyree? Well, you're often asking my opinion. You know, obviously we have to ask them. Uh, but I'm going to say quite a bit when three guys all ran that direction that he was going. Uh, I don't know if you and I were running that direction, if they'd have been so fired up about going that direction. But uh, <laughs> it, when you watch it on tape, they were all heading that direction. Mike, talk a little bit about the Bears. Well, they, you know, I had a great win for them last week. You know, they were down, I think at one time, 17 points. And a uh, quarterback, uh, you know, ran the ball effectively. You know, I think he rushed for over 60 yards and, and, and he had oh, 170 or so throwing the football. And uh, they had a number of other guys that rushed uh, the ball for 50 or 60 yards. And um, they, they made a strong comeback on the road. Uh, and uh, you have to give them credit. They were, in fact, there was one time when they were getting ready to be down 31 to seven, it looked like. And uh, they forced a, f a, a turnover and got the ball, went back and scored, and so on and so forth. So it was a good win for them. And, uh, you know, each week uh, as coaches, we, we have a responsibility for our players understanding the personnel and the people we're playing in, uh, in the next game. And um, coaches, you know, sometimes they say all games are the same, and they're really not. Um, we, we prepare the same way. We have a game plan in all three phases. Uh, and we talk to our players about the team we're playing and where we want to attack them and where we think they can attack us, and that's part of coaching. And so um, we, we watch them, we come up with our plans, we go out and we work hard, and uh, we have to improve ourselves. We have a lot to learn, really, in, in all three phases. We're a little further along on defense when the ones are out there, uh, but uh, up front, you know, in the last game, you know, the center, the right guard, and the right tackle was the first game they ever played last week, first time they ever played college football for the most part. And those guys have a long ways to go. So, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to getting back out there with them tomorrow. But you had those three starters, <clears throat> new starters, and your offensive line didn't get a single flag. Yeah. I was proud of, uh, of them for uh, their consistency, uh, their, obviously their effort and um, the way they handled themselves from a penalty standpoint. I mean, so even some of your veteran lines, like Martinez, Garner, they got, I remember an opening night, they got about <coughs> a dozen false mm -hmm. stars. So it just seemed like, <clears throat> I don't know if it surprised you. Or, and furthermore, I don't know if they graded well overall beyond just not getting penalized, but did they play for Played average. Or? They played very average. Uh, again, the three guys, first time they ever play college football, they were on the big scene. And if you take the that side out of it, they played great. But if you grade it the way that we grade our, our video, they played very average. You talked earlier about J.W. and his running the ball, and he needs to know when to run it. Mm -hmm. Were there times early in the game the other night that you passed up maybe some, some chances to run it? And how many... How many carries are you comfortable with? Not, not really. Uh, I, I thought he handled himself well mentally in this game. Uh, a couple times, uh, I, I, I wished he would have uh, done something different, but that happens. You know, it's 70 so plays in a game, they're going to make some mistakes. Uh, I don't know that there's a number. A lot of times, that's predicated on the way they play us. Um, in my opinion, Florida State uh, did not want him to keep the ball and run it. They played. Uh, they sat back and, and didn't allow him to keep the football. That surprised me a little bit, but uh, in, in my opinion, that's the way they, they played us. You guys have some uh, deep threats, Jawan Seals, Aitman, that you didn't really get going against Florida State. Is it a focus for you guys now to, to get them going in the next few games, and how do you go about that? Well, we try. We drop some balls. Uh, that, that when you drop passes, it uh, obviously doesn't look as good and it's not as fun, but um, we, we definitely want to throw the ball down the field. We've always thrown the ball down the field here, and, and we feel like that opens up our running game. Is it on JW as well to kind of, kind of get that going at the quarterback position as well, looking for those guys and finding them? Well, it's just based on the play call and the defense we play each week, and, and it changes uh, sometimes, but for the most part, you know, he's instructed where to go with the ball based on what the defense gives him. If you combine everything that Ogba brings, 
size, athleticism, motor. Is, does he, do you think he might have a higher ceiling than any defensive end you've coached? Since, well, since you've been the head, head coach. Who, who, who's the best one that we've coached here since then? Throw some names out at me. I don't remember. Statistically or potential? Yeah, but what or either one? He should have been, but, it, but he got hurt. Um, Blatnick was really good. Hugo started a bunch. Um, you had coach with Scooby, or was that all us? Uh, I was here with Scooby. Um, Nathan Peterson. Richmond. Uh, I would say that uh, he, he has a chance to be uh, as good as anybody since I've been the head coach here. I mean, just from the things that you mentioned. He's really quick, he's strong, his attitude's good, his work ethic's good, and he's been very durable and tough up to this point. Probably like that he's a sophomore, too. Mm -hmm. Like that he's a sophomore, it's a good thing. But is that what it makes him potentially elite is his motor? Mm -hmm. he, he, he just plays. You know, so many, you, you hear us talk about it as coaches all the time, but it's enjoyable to be around players to just go out and play, and they don't talk a lot and get, out, get caught up in everything going on out there on the side show, and he just plays. And, uh, in fact, I don't really hear him talk very much. Uh, so it's enjoyable to be around a player that just likes to play the game. You went out and recruited Hatton, and Glenn pointed out, I guess one of the effort plays was his play chasing Winston to the goal line and popping the the ball. Talk about that effort. Well, obviously it's very important for a football team and especially on defense. You know, if you're not chasing the ball and surrounding it in, in, in every game you play, but uh, you hate to ever say especially a certain team, but when you play a team as talented as Florida State, you better chase the ball because you're going to miss some tackles. You're going to need some backup. And, and I thought it was really uh, a, a great effort play. I know when I got home, uh, whatever time we got home, 1.30 in the morning or whatever, and uh, I was walking in the house, and my nine-year-old came and told me, and that was the first play he mentioned. And uh, he said he uh, he thought it was uh, it was great how Ofa he likes Ofa because he has long hair, uh, but but he said how Ofa chased chased him down all the way to the goal line for a big guy, and and that's a, a good point uh, that uh, you know that just kind of exemplifies who we want to be as a football team. I think people recognize the challenge that Glenn faced in all those guys last year's defense and obviously the challenge of Florida State's offense. But how have you seen him enable his defense to, they all said they weren't successful, they lost the game. But to have been as effective as they were, as often as they were, how has he gotten the defense to that point? He's done a good job over the last uh, year and a half or so since he's been a coordinator of Stay the Course. And he has a plan in place, and he does a really good job of uh, getting the information across to the players. And, and I've said this before, before, there's a lot of good coaches out there, but they can't get information to the players, and then the players can't uh, play well on Saturday because they don't really understand. And, and he's a good teacher and a good coach, and they know where he stands. And I think that helps, uh, and he breaks it down and where it's, it's easy to learn, and the, the players trust him and they trust the coaches and they want to play hard for those guys. I get a sense this is a little bit just who Glenn <clears throat> is, but throughout August he shook his head a lot about, you know, we're not ready, we're not ready, mm -hmm. and yet, you know. Well, not. honestly, we're still not ready. Uh, I mean, if you watch tape and you see mistakes we make in practice and things, mental errors that really can hurt you in a football game, because, you know, you go back to this game and there were two or three mental mistakes on small things that were really the difference in us winning and losing that game. And you see that a lot when young players are in practice, and that's what concerns him. Because you want to be able to walk off the field, you want your ones to be really smooth, and then you want your twos to be up in that 75% category where you feel like, okay, there's things we can correct. Well, they were in the 25% category a lot of practices this fall. And you know, you start to get frustrated, and then you look, and eight of them are, have never played before. And so then patience becomes a factor and teaching and bring them along slow. So we have a long ways to go. Uh, am I pleased with the effort they gave? Uh, yes, but we still have a long ways to go. Can you comment on your, your former player, Tyler, Tyler Patman? Not many people, you know, he wasn't drafted. Not many people gave him a whole lot of, uh, you know, a lot of chance to make mm -hmm. the Cowboys roster, but he, he did. And I know you got to see him the other night. It was awesome. And uh, I don't know where I was, but he, one game, one of those games, I think he had two interceptions. And we talked about it, and somebody said he might make the team. And uh, it, when he came here, he just worked hard. 
uh, for and he was a big part of our team last year. Uh, he he just played and and we we used him in multiple spots and I'd like to have a lot of guys like him because he's very intelligent and he's just tough enough and physical enough to play and he has really good savvy. He he has a feel for where the ball is going to go, so I was very happy for him. So. Anything else? All right.